Well, I have good news for you today. The good news today is about empty cups and plates. We're in a series on the emptiness of Easter. And we talked about the empty cross, the empty tomb, the empty grave clothes. Last week we talked about the empty hearted and today we're talking about empty cups and plates. This is Leonardo da Vinci's famous painting. You've probably all seen this before and from where you're sitting you may not be able to see the detail but Leonardo da Vinci knew that there were empty plates because as you look at this painting very carefully while there are plates on the table they're all empty, not a morsel of food on the plates. And that's why today we're talking about empty plates and empty cups. The cups don't even appear in this picture. The cups are still on the shelves, empty, ca empty plates and empty cups. Now, the disciples, as they were having the Last Supper, uh, they were in this upper room and they were enjoying the traditional Passover supper. Now this supper was unlike other suppers in so much that there was singing, there were readings, there was eating of foods in a special order, and uh, drinking of wine in a special order. Uh, on the screen right now you see a typical plate for a Passover meal today. This is often referred to as a Seder. And uh, you'll see uh, right in the middle, of course, is the cup that would hold the wine. But right behind the cup, you'll see there are vegetables. And uh, usually it was uh, parsley or, or lettuce. It could even be celery. And they were dipped into salt water before they were consumed. And again, there would be readings to go with this in a typical Passover meal at the time of Christ. And then uh, that uh, would represent the tears of the people while they were slaves in Egypt. And then there was uh, the bitter herbs or the horseradish. And uh, that, of course, was representing the, the bitter times of slavery. And then in, in the foreground on this plate, you'll see a piece of lamb. It's actually what's called a shank bone. And uh, I'll give you the, uh, the names here on this next slide. Roasted lamb. And that represented the, the annual Passover lamb that was looking forward to the coming of the Messiah. Uh, then there was the matzah, the unleavened bread, going clockwise around the plate. And the matzah being uh, unleavened was to represent the fact that this was uh, so something that was unexpected. It was done hurriedly when they left Egypt. So they, they wanted to get out of town fast. And so they didn't have time for the bread to rise. So we have the unleavened bread. And then, of course, we have a, a, an egg. And uh, the egg represented... In uh, some traditions, uh, the temple that had been destroyed and rebuilt, and other traditions, it represented the daily sacrifice. And then, uh, right next to the cup, to the left of the cup, there was what was called the haroset, and that's pronounced differently by different groups of Jewish people. Just like in English, we have, uh, you know, a certain region of the country that says. Uh, creek in another region of the country it says crick but either one is correct so this uh, haroset was was actually a mixture of fruits and nuts and it was made into something like a paste and it represented the mortar of the bricks that they uh, had to put together in order to build things for the Egyptians so what was actually happening here is that there was uh, a story being told, the story of uh, redemption, the story of how Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt, across the Red Sea, and in 
to the promised land eventually under the leadership of uh, Joshua. So what we find is that uh, at the time of Christ, they were celebrating this Passover meal. And with this Passover meal, they had the four cups of wine. The, the cup of wine would be replaced uh, three times. So the first time be poured out, and then there'd be three more cups of wine uh, that would be consumed. And uh, th- with each cup of wine, there was a reading, I will bring out, God was promising in Exodus 6, I will bring the, my people out of Egypt, I will deliver my people, I will redeem my people, and he said, I will take you as my people. Isn't that good news? He takes us as his people. And so what happened is that they would, uh, they'd have these readings, and then they would uh, eat, and they would drink, and they would uh, drink the wine. And what we find in um, the Passover meal is that this whole experience would take hours, a minimum of three hours. Often uh, it would take five hours or more, and it was for the entire family. And what we read from Scripture is that Jesus got up from this supper. You see, Jesus and the disciples were in the upper room, and they got up from the supper and laid aside his garments, and taking a towel, he girded himself. He put the towel around his waist. So Jesus got up from the supper. Now, why did he get up from the supper? Well, the, the, the cups and the plates were empty. The meal was over. They had just spent hours together. And because the cups and plates were empty, the meal was over. He got up from the supper, and he began to wash the disciples' feet. Now, I want to show you, uh, who are online, a video of uh, foot washing. And uh, we are going to separate here in Irvine, our congregation, and uh, we're going to invite you to participate in the foot washing. And we actually have three different ways for you to do that. Uh, The first way, if you choose, is to go into the hub, which is off to my left, and there is uh, water and towels, basins, and you can actually wash one another's feet. This is what Jesus did to the disciples. Secondly, uh, you could exit and go to the hub, and you could uh, use uh, these uh, towels like we did at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church when we worshiped there. They're they're waterless towels. They are damp, and we could use those to wash one another's feet uh, if you prefer to do it that way. Or the third way you can participate is to just remain here in the sanctuary and watch the video on uh, the washing of feet. So there are three options. Now, those of you who are watching online, you just have one option because we're not going to let you go to sleep. We're going to show you a video, and the video is about foot washing. And the video is about five minutes long. So those of you who decide to exit and go to the hub and wash one another's feet, as soon as you get there, please begin, because when we come back, uh, we, we uh, are going to need to, to take into account the, the, the five-minute time frame. So we want to do this quickly, because we don't want the people online worshiping with us to, to have a long, drawn-out, silent period of time. So we're going to ask you to exit quickly if you choose to go to the hub or remain here and watch the video. And those who do go to the hub will come back and join us, and we will celebrate uh, the Lord's Supper at that time. So we'll go ahead and start the video now, and we'll invite you, if you choose to, to go to the hub and wash one another's feet, either uh, without water or with water, or you may remain here in the sanctuary. Let's do that right now, and let's do it quickly.